Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 20th of January. India reports over 300,000 new COVID-19 cases, highest in eight months. Women sentenced to death in Pakistan over blasphemous WhatsApp activity. And U.S. President Joe Biden defends Afghanistan exit, says no apologies for what I did. And now for all the details. India reported 317,532 new COVID-19 infections over the last 24 hours, the highest daily count in eight months, bringing the cases tally to 38.22 million on Thursday. Meanwhile, Western Maharashtra will reopen schools next week, its education minister said on Thursday, despite the state reporting the most number of infections nationwide. India reported 317,532 new infections over the last 24 hours, the highest in eight months, bringing the total to 38.22 million, the second highest globally behind the United States. This comes after the first major rise in COVID-19 testing was witnessed on Wednesday after the health ministry warned states of the risks of low testing and missing the spread of the virus. Meanwhile, despite reporting the highest tally of infections nationwide, Western Maharashtra's education minister on Thursday said the state will reopen schools next week as new cases of the Omicron variant have fallen sharply. और मंडे 24 से जो है वो स्कूल शुरू हो रहे पहली से 12 तक और प्री प्राइमरी स्कूल का भी शुरू करने का निर्णय हमने लिया है लेकिन ये निर्णय लेते हुए वक्त हमने जैसा कहा था पहले भी कि पूरी तरह से एसओपीज का पालन किया जाएगा दो हॉस्पिटलाइजेशंस हैव बीन लो अमिड द ओमिक्रॉन ड्रिवन सर्ज हेल्थ एक्सपर्ट्स हैव हाउएवर वॉन दैट कॉम्प्लेसेंसी एंड डिफाइंग कोविड-19 प्रोटोकॉल्स कुड ओवरवेल्म द हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम वी कैन नॉट बी कॉम्प्लेसेंट इन आवर approach and it is up to each and every citizen now that they should be practicing uh, all the measures like mask up, sanitization and social distancing. India has administered nearly 1.6 billion COVID-19 vaccination doses so far, including booster doses to its eligible population aged above 15 years, which accounts for at least 70% of the eligible population getting the mandatory two doses. The Indian Army has sought assistance from China's People's Liberation Army to locate the missing youth from India's northeastern Arunachal Pradesh state on their side and return him as per established protocol reports suggest. The Chinese army had been contacted via the hotline to alert them that an Indian citizen out hunting had lost his way. Tapir Gao, member of parliament from East Arunachal Pradesh, said on Twitter, that 17-year-old youth Miram Tharon from Zido village of Upper Siang district was abducted by Chinese army on Tuesday from Lungta Jor area, where China built a 3 to 4 kilometer road in 2018. According to Gao, the incident came to light when the boy's friend Joni Yai Ying escaped from the Chinese army and reported about the kidnap. Ninong Iring, a Congress party legislator from Arunachal Pradesh, Pasigat West constituency, termed the alleged abduction an unfortunate incident. He called for the safe return of Miram Tharun and urged the central government to check the Chinese intrusion of Indian lands. In news from Pakistan, a court in Pakistan's Rawalpindi on Wednesday sentenced to death a woman for allegedly sending blasphemous messages to her estranged friend. Anika Atik was convicted by the court on the complaint of Farooq Hassanat, who had filed a case against her in 2020. Reports suggest Anika and Farooq were friends, but differences erupted between the two, and an extremely angry Anika sent him blasphemous messages. Consequently, Farooq filed a complaint and she was arrested. Human rights groups say blasphemy laws are often misused in Pakistan to settle personal rivalries. Nobody has been executed under these laws, but several people have been killed on mere suspicion. Last year, a Sri Lankan national working as factory manager in Pakistan's Sial court was lynched by a mob over blasphemy allegations. Moving on, scores of locals in Gilgit Baltistan recently held a massive protest against the government and law enforcement agencies over the arrest of a social activist for expressing his dissenting opinion 
on social media. They called out Pakistan's crackdown on freedom of speech and abuse of power by the law enforcement agencies. Scores of locals in Shigar district of Gilgit, Balistan recently demonstrated against the government, especially the law enforcement agencies, after they arrested a social activist, Ahmed Shu Shigari, for expressing his dissenting opinion on a social media platform. The protesters claimed the police had launched a crackdown against the people of the illegally occupied region and had created a situation reminiscent of a despotic rule. They demanded suspension of the superintendent of police in the case and initiate a judicial inquiry. I social media, after the massive protest, the administration that could not present enough substance against Ahmed Chu released him. But this has triggered a huge debate in the political discourse of Gilgit Baldistan. This is not the first time. Citizens have time and again raised their voices against this gross injustice, but little to nothing has been done to protect their rights over the years. Moving on, defending his decision to pull troops out of Afghanistan, which resulted in the Taliban gaining control, U.S. President Joe Biden has said he would make no apologies for what he did. He, however, said he felt bad about the ongoing crisis in Afghanistan as a result of Taliban's incompetence. U.S. President Joe Biden on Wednesday defended his decision to pull out from Afghanistan and said he would make no apologies for what he did. Speaking on the occasion of completing a year in the office, Biden said there was no way to get out of Afghanistan after 20 years easily. He said that he, however, felt bad about the crisis in Afghanistan as a result of what he termed Taliban's incompetence. He blamed the previous administrations for the fiasco. There is no way to get out of Afghanistan after 20 years easily. Not possible, no matter when you did it. And I make no apologies for what I did. I have a great concern for the women and men who were blown up on the line at the airport by a terrorist attack against them. But the military will acknowledge, and I think you will, who know a lot about foreign policy, that had we stayed and I had not pulled those troops out, we would be asked to put somewhere between 20 and 50,000 more troops back in. The United States completed the withdrawal of its forces from Afghanistan on 31st of August 2021, ending 20 years of war that culminated in the militant Taliban's return to power. Since then, Afghanistan has been reeling under a massive humanitarian crisis in the absence of international aid and frozen banking assets. Afghan women and girls are also protesting about their rights which have been curtailed by the orthodox regime. The Pentagon has declassified and publicly released the video footage of a U.S. drone strike in Kabul that killed 10 civilians in the final hours of a chaotic American withdrawal that ended a 20-year war in Afghanistan. The U.S. Central Command on Wednesday released declassified videos from a botched U.S. drone attack that killed 10 civilians in Afghanistan in August last year, in the final days before American troops withdrew from the country. The release of the videos came after the New York Times filed a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit against the U.S. Central Command. It comes after the Pentagon said in December that no U.S. military personnel would be held accountable for the drone strike. An earlier investigation by the Air Force Inspector General said the August 29 strike was caused by execution errors, interpreting information that supported certain viewpoints and communication breakdowns. The military previously called the strike a tragic mistake. The Pentagon had said earlier that the strike targeted an Islamic State suicide bomber who posed an imminent threat to U.S.-led troops at the airport 
as they completed the last stages of their withdrawal from Afghanistan. However, reports emerged almost immediately that the drone strike in a neighborhood west of Kabul's Hamid Karzai International Airport had killed civilians, including children. Video from the scene at the time showed the wreckage of a car strewn around the courtyard of a building. The strike came three days after an Islamic State suicide bomber killed 13 U.S. troops and scores of Afghan civilians who had crowded outside the airport gates. Desperate to secure seats on evacuation flight after U.S.-trained Afghan forces melted away and the Taliban swept to power in the capital. In news from Nepal. Nepal has followed suit by rejecting an offer from Poland to donate 9 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines after several African countries declined offers from developed countries to dump vaccines with short shelf life upon them. Nepal has rejected an offer from Poland to donate 9 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines following suit after several African countries declined offers from developed countries to dump vaccines with short shelf life upon them. Nepal's Health Secretary Roshan Pokhrel told a local daily that his ministry had politely declined the offer of the Polish government. However, the government would accept Johnson & Johnson's Janssen vaccine since it has a shelf life of two years. The development comes in the wake of several underdeveloped countries destroying millions of doses of vaccines donated by developed countries after expiry of their shelf life. Minister of Health and Population Birod Khatiwara also told the Daily that in the past the government accepted COVID vaccines with expiry date of one or two months and used them all but now did not want to receive any vaccine with short shelf life. As of Wednesday, 12,466,092 people of 41% of little over 30 million population have been fully vaccinated in the Himalayan nation. The government has also launched booster shots and ramped up vaccination drive as coronavirus infections surge due to the spread of the Omicron variant. Nepal on Wednesday recorded 11,352 cases of COVID-19, the highest 24-hour figures reported since the onset of the pandemic in March of 2020. Nepal's COVID-19 active case load has now climbed to 47,929 and death toll to 11,628. In a bid to give new lease of life to beggars, socially vulnerable and the abandoned elderly people, authorities in India's Odisha state have built an integrated infrastructure complex for them. More than 40 homeless beggars are being rehabilitated at the centre and will be provided skill development training, officials said. More than 40 beggars have found a new hope to live as the authorities in Sambalpur district of India's eastern Odisha state have built a rehabilitation centre for them. Homeless beggars were brought to the newly constructed integrated infrastructure complex near Baramunda village on Wednesday. Authorities aim to provide skill development training to the rescued beggars, including elderly persons with disabilities and drug addicts at the centre and give them a new lease of life. We will give them different types of training, we will see their health conditions, we will give them counseling. So what will happen is that they will get a new way and they will get skills so that they can think about their own daily lives. Officials said the complex will make the district beggar-free and improve the life of the less fortunate, downtrodden and abandoned people. Reports suggest in the last two years, the number of beggars across Odisha state has increased by 580 and it is about to reach 7,000. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.